Hey Titans, I'm Kevin and I am a peer health educator for Titan Law. And today we're going to talk about sleep and self care. So let's start off with a question about sleep. Why is sleep so important? Sleep is important because it restores energy to muscles and recharges the immune system. It solidifies and consolidates memories. It improves physical and mental health and it helps in daytime performance and safety. But if it's so important, how come most of us don't get enough of it? According to the National College Health Assessment in 2018, one in four CSUF students reported that sleep difficulties hurt their academic performance. 92% of CSUF students reported a problem with sleepiness during daytime activities, and only 7% of CSUF students reported getting enough sleep to feel rested six to seven days in the last week. Most of us aren't getting enough sleep. So how many hours of sleep is considered enough? Seven to nine hours of sleep is recommended per night by the National Sleep Foundation. If we don't get enough sleep, it can lead to decreased grades, attention and memory, while increasing mood swings and stress levels. How do you feel when you don't get enough sleep? And how do you feel when you do get enough sleep? Now that we did a little self-reflection, let's talk about creating an optimal sleep environment. Generally, a dark room, a low noise level, and a cooler room temperature around 65 degrees Fahrenheit helps. Other tips include avoiding artificial light from phones, laptops, TVs, and other electronics. Being exposed to light from a screen can delay falling asleep up to 60 minutes because it inhibits melatonin secretion, the hormone that makes you feel sleepy. Sticking to a bedtime and routine as best you can. Avoiding caffeine like coffee, certain teas, and soda after 3 p.m. Reserving the bed for sleep and sex only. If you do homework in your bed, you might start to associate your bed with stress, or you might fall asleep on your homework. Also, it is important to note that stressed out people don't sleep very well. So find activities that relieve stress during the day, like drawing, talking to friends, or exercising. There are several apps that can help keep track of your sleeping progress and other great resources on you at Fullerton that can be very useful. Good luck. Hi there, I'm Daisy and I'm a graduate assistant working at Titanwell. And now we're gonna go ahead and dive into self-care. So as Kevin mentioned, people who are stressed typically don't get enough hours of sleep. So we're gonna talk about self-care and how it can help with stress and just your overall well-being. But first, let's reflect. What does self-care mean to you? Self-care is basically a way that we take care of our physical and emotional well-being. And although it varies from person to person, it is always important to have a key self-care plan. By identifying what stresses you out, what are some factors that prevent you from implementing self-care, and what factors enable you to prevent self-care. So after reflecting on all of this, it becomes a lot easier to set realistic goals. And remember, having a self-care routine can definitely prevent you from burnout. Burnout is when we push ourselves past to the point of exhaustion. And at this point, every task, no matter how big or small, can seem like too much. And burnout typically happens when we neglect to take care of ourselves when we're super busy and overwhelmed due to prolonged stress. If you've experienced stress or burnout before, just remember that you're not alone. According to the 2018 National College Assessment, 40% of CSUF students reported stress as a factor affecting their academics. And 89% of CSUF students reported feeling overwhelmed any time during the last 12 months. That's a lot of us, but by participating in self-care, we can better manage the stress that we experience. Self-care reduces the negative effects of stress, re-energizes the mind and body, and helps the emotional self by managing anxiety, anger, and sadness. It is important to keep in mind that there are different ways of coping that affect our self-care. There are both healthy and unhealthy coping mechanisms that we do to deal with stressful moments, events, and emotions. This is how to tell the difference. Healthy self-care decreases stress both in the short term and in the long term. It also doesn't have any negative effects in our social relationships. It enhances daily function and it has a positive effect in our academics. And this can look like having a balanced meal, having a support group, writing in your planner or journal, or just making time for yourself. 
As for unhealthy self-care, it can decrease our stress in the short term. In the long term, it can have negative effects on our social relationships. It can hinder our daily function, and it can also have a negative impact in our academics. And this can look like procrastination, excessive drinking, and sleeping too little or too much. It is great to keep in mind that practicing positive self-care can help us feel more in control, connected, and confident in ourselves. So take a moment and reflect on how you can incorporate more positive self-care into your life. Thank you for watching. For more information on sleep and self-care, you can check out Counseling and Psychological Services, you at Fullerton, or any of the services listed throughout the video. If you want more, we will be having a sleep and self-care Zoom hangout on November 19th at 12 p.m. And don't forget to complete the survey at the end of this video for your monthly promo item. And for more information, keep up with Titan Wells Instagram.